A limousine drives through different roads until it gets to a skyscraper. Four men step out of it and walk to an elevator that leads to the MD's office. They settle in for a meeting and we are introduced to Mr. Bolt, the MD. He asks how their development in Brazil is going. Richard tells him they're faced with the problem of cutting down thousands of acres of natural rainforest for the project. Bolt is unconcerned even when Richard explains the rare Indian race that lives in the forests. He then asks about their progress in Florida. Richard explains that they'd need to tear down a nursing home for the aged if they were to build that massive Bolt shopping mall. Like the Brazil situation, Bolt is unconcerned. He tells Richard to carry out the operation late at night if he's worried about the news. He then shows the men a prototype version of a notorious portion of Los Angeles. Bolt says he currently owns half of land while the government owns the other half. However, he says he will own all of it by noon the next day. He then asks his colleagues if they wonder why he's getting such a piece of trash. And he presses down a bottom that lets down another prototype, but it is a grand building. Mr. Bolt calls it the Bolt Center and it has been the vision of his life. His meeting is interrupted by the voice of a woman who tells him he has a visitor. The visitor is Vance and he announces that he has bought the other half of the land that Bolt just discussed. He offers to buy Bolt's house, and Bolt returns the offer. They decide to discuss the business somewhere other than the office. Vance takes Bolt to the neighborhood they intend to buy. He then says he lived in the area before, so it's only right he bought it. Bolt doesn't agree, so they make a bet. Vance says he will let Bolt buy his half of the property if he can survive in the slum for 30 days without using any of his riches or name. And Bolt agrees to the bet. His partners try to convince him to revoke his agreement and think about it. But Bolt insists and assures them that he would be able to do it, but they don't believe him. And Bolt is tapped with an alarm system that will go off if he steps out of the poor neighborhood. Vance drops Bolt off on the streets and rips his breast pocket so that Bolt looks the part. Bolt walks into a hotel to book a room. But what they actually have is a hall with many beds. Bolt tries to convince the attendant to let him stay without paying, but he gets kicked out. He finds an open drum and decides to stay there but runs away when he sees mice running out. Then he goes to the church for shelter, but they are closed for the day. He finds a spot to sleep in, but the doors are thrown wide open and he is swept into a large bin. The next morning, Bolt wakes up to find someone called Sailor peeing on him. He gives the man his handkerchief to blow his nose in and walks away, and goes around looking for what to eat, but shop owners won't let him eat even leftovers. He keeps trying to make money by cleaning windshields, dancing in the streets, but nothing works. And when he is walking down the street, two men stop him and rob him of his shoes. A woman named Molly comes out and chases them away. She gives him another pair of shoes and takes him to the mission where he can eat. He then meets Sailor there. Bolt follows her around, asking where he can make money. He tells her he's tried begging and she tells him her story. Molly was married in the past and stopped her career as a dancer to be with her husband. But he abandoned her and she now lives on the streets alone. Meanwhile, the sailor realized he peed on Bolt, so he apologized and called him Pepto. And it became Bolt's name in the streets. On their way back, they discover that the shoe robbers have set Molly's hideout on fire. Molly comes up with a plan to get them, but Bolt suggests that they sue them. And the rest think he's stupid. The plan is for Bolt to get the robbers to pursue him, so that the rest can pour a hot pot of cabbage on their heads. We are then shown a Chinese restaurant's kitchen. And a man chops cabbage and dumps them in a boiling pot. Suddenly, the pot disappears. Bolt goes to the thieves' hideout and provokes them by kicking up their table. He runs away in the direction of the plan and locks himself inside a room as Molly suggested. But he is easily dragged out by the robbers. Molly orders the guys to hold on with the pot until the robbers are right under them. The robbers punch Bolt bolt, so he falls on the road and his alarm goes off. Bolt knows that he must return, unless Vance will think he left the neighborhood. He keeps coming back, and they keep punching him. Molly and the guys are able to get the position they want, so they empty the pot on the robbers' heads. The sailor uses gin to treat his wounds, saying it kills germs. They ask him why he stayed there for the robbers to beat him up so badly, but Bolt can't answer. And Bolt is given a large carton to share with Molly. She puts a knife between them and says Bolt must not cross, even when he says he has no interest in her. She apologizes for being harsh, but says she must. Meanwhile, 
Vance is told that Bolt stepped out of the boundary because he was beaten up badly. Vance doesn't believe them, but is shocked when he finds out that Bolt nearly died. Out in the cold streets, the rains have increased. Bolt and Molly they have to abandon their shelter and head to the mission. However, that place is locked and they find some other junkyard to sleep in. The next morning, they wake up and don't find the sailor beside them. They go out looking for him, and Bolt finds him dead on the road. They then get his ashes and pour them in a leak that heads to the ocean, as the sailor wanted. It is now 28 days, and Vance fears from losing the land. He goes to Bolt's lawyers and convinces them to betray him. And they accept. It's D-Day, and Bolt wants to take Molly back to his house. They very happy, and dance around heaps of clothes. At his house, he finds a party there, and thinks it's in his name. But Vance says, he remembers no bet. Bolt then talks to Richard and the other lawyers. But they all play dumb, and he accuses them of betraying him. Bolt then gets angry and starts taking things out of the house. But the security intercepts him, and drags him and Molly out of the house. Molly tries to placate him, but he runs off and leaves her. Some days later, Bolt has really gone mad. He is talking to himself about getting his riches back, when another street man says he's the richest man alive. This causes a fight between them, and it takes the police to stop Bolt from hurting him. However, the police can't hold him off for too long, so the paramedics step in. Bolt is taken to a hospital, and keeps babbling nonsense. He is dumped in a corner, when the nurses say there's no more space in the ward. This is when Bolt cries out that life stinks. He gets the other patient started, so a doctor orders him to be injected with medicine for a delirious person. Another doctor sees him and has him transferred to a bed because he needs the wheelchair. The first doctor sees Bolt on the bed and orders that he be injected with the same medicine again because he's delirious. Just as he leaves, a nurse notices Bolt fading away and calls the same doctor's attention to it. But the doctor orders that Bolt be taken to the hospital and wonders who overdosed him. Molly comes to see Bolt and begs him not to die. She tells him she loves him and that brings him back to life. Bolt leaves the hospital and is happy to be alive again. Meanwhile, Vance brought a party to the slums to mark the beginning of the demolition. Bolt sees the people scampering and says he won't run away again. A poor man says there is a party happening in their neighborhood and they're not even invited. Instead, their homes are being crushed. Bolt says he won't let them take the slum from him after they take his riches. He gets a megaphone and tells the people to fight and not give in. He then tells them to fight for their home and follow him. As soon as he turns, the people carry on like he wasn't talking to them. It takes Molly to convince them to stay. Molly tells them there's free food at the party, and they're all invited since it's held in their neighborhood. She says they can't keep running forever and that they have to do something at least. The people listen to her and follow Bolt to the venue. They storm the party and eat as much food as they want. Bolt tells his friend to pretend like one of the bulldozers crushed his legs so that they'd be distracted. Richard tries to talk them away but they don't budge. He gets angry and goes to tell Vance. Vance and Richard watch as a bulldozer breaks up the header of the party and he sees that it is Bolt and Vance goes to get another one. They begin to fight with the bulldozers but Bolt gets the thong of Vance's bulldozer and turns the vehicle to the side. He picks Vance into the air with his thong, and makes him admit in front of the press and the people that Bolt had won the bet. And Vance admits to his defeat. Some weeks later, a lawsuit between Vance and Bolt ends in Bolt's favor. He gets all his riches and businesses back. And unlike his initial plan, Bolt builds a park and improves the counseling and health care in the slums. He lets the place be and foregoes his plan to ruin it. He gets married to Molly in the local church in the slums, unlike people's expectations of him. Bolt allows Molly to carry her cans with her, because she claims they're a lot of money. As they move, the man Bolt argued with concerning who's the richest man, goes after the car saying it's his own. But Bolt gets angry, and gets down from the car. And he starts, pursuing the man. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video. Back in my bag and I got to brag I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel.